Emiliano, and this lecture looks at writing the thesis. There are five areas we are going to examine. First, we will look at suggestions for writing a well-presented thesis. Secondly, we will discuss the expectations concerning the style and structure of the thesis. Then, we will address how you can achieve a clear argument. This is followed by a brief discussion on proving your knowledge about relevant literature. And finally, we will propose some helpful writing tips. Now, writing a well-presented thesis starts with writing good sentences. So, let's first look at the very basic unit of writing, sentences. In a thesis, you are expected to demonstrate good grammar and thoughtful consideration about your topic. You should use a formal academic tone throughout your writing. All these are tied up with the sentences you write. Sentences should be complete with one idea within every sentence. A complete sentence contains a subject and a verb. It is preferred that you use the active voice rather than the passive voice, as this ensures clarity of expression. Avoid fancy words and fancy sounding sentences, as this impresses no one, neither your supervisor nor your panel. You only impress yourself. So use short, simple words and phrases. State precisely what you mean and aim for an economy of expression. Let's now look at the verb tenses most commonly used. There are three time frames, present, past, and future. Ensure that your writing is situated in one of these time frames and that the verb tense you use is consistent with this time frame throughout your thesis. Do not shift tenses like this. In 1996, Jones proposed that all approaches to the problem were within the same paradigm. He says that a level playing field is necessary if we want consistent outcomes. Let's first look at the present tense. Most academic writing is written in the present tense. This is used three times more than the past tense. We use the present tense to refer to actions and events that take place generally in the present, but not necessarily at the present moment or time. For example, observational learning is important in socialization. In particular, people learn patterns of behavior by observing primetime television shows. This thesis presents a discussion of observational learning and the process of socialization. This is followed by a review of behavior patterns that may be learned as a result of watching primetime television. Finally, some implications for public policy are presented. Now, let's look at the past tense. By contrast, the past tense is mostly used for specific actions or events that took place in the past and no longer continue in the present. This is usually the case with case studies, specific experiments, or specific historical events. Here are some examples. In 1994, Hilton Hotels Corporation announced plans for a reorganization of its internal operations. Zygmunt et al., 1995, page 184. 3M developed post-it notes and many other unique products. In their 2001 study, Wolf and Parker found that costs in nonprofit hospitals increased 24.7%. So what about the future tense? The future tense is not often used in academic writing. It is generally reserved for plans and predictions with a very high degree of certainty. For example, the company will expand in 2012. Okay, now that we have the tenses sorted out, let's take a look at some pointers for writing organized paragraphs. A well-written paragraph and consequently a well-written thesis follows the formula TEE. -E. T for topic sentence or controlling idea, E for explain, elaborate, define, the second E for examples, evidence, illustrations. Let's look at an example. 
Formalization is an important element in organization structure. It means literally having things written down. There are many ways an organization can write down who does what. Firstly, there is the organization chart. Similarly, job descriptions, policies, procedures, and rules are all examples of formalization. Formalization of these specify what will be done, who will do it, and how they will do it. Some other things to remember about a paragraph are, although there are no definite rules, between 100 to 150 words in a paragraph is a good length to express your thoughts. Avoid long paragraphs of 250 words or more, and ensure that there is one main idea in every paragraph. Once we have our paragraph sorted out, we can look at organizing them into the thesis. There are three essential qualities for writing a good thesis. Unity, coherence, and development. Quite simply, unity means that when ideas and paragraphs are strung together and the relationship between them is clear, then the whole writing is said to have unity. A piece of writing has coherence when there is a clear relation between paragraphs. As with unity, when the paragraphs are strung together and the connection between them is clear, then it is coherent. In other words, everything fits together convincingly. Unity goes hand in hand with coherence. The ideas and discussion in your thesis should be a connected, convincing argument. Hence, if we were to diagram that, it would look like this. Your research question should logically flow into the discussion of your data collection. The data collection section should logically lead to the findings and analysis section. And this section leads naturally to the conclusions and recommendations. If there is a logical arrangement to the ideas, the whole discussion flows. This provides focus and coherence to your topic as a whole, and thus everything fits neatly together. You, therefore, have a well-written and well-argued thesis. The third essential quality of good thesis writing is development. This means your discussion must be amply supported with details, research, and examples where necessary. Okay, let's move on. You know how important first impressions are in life? Well, a well-written and thought-out thesis should also make a good first impression. This is essential. Good first impressions are reflected in the title, table of contents, abstract, and introduction. Let's have a quick look at each of these. Your title must give the reader a sense of what you are examining. In other words, it must clearly indicate your topic and encapsulate what you are doing. Keep it short, no more than 15 words long, catchy and attention-grabbing. Next is the table of contents. At first glance, it should give the reader a sense of the organization and logic of your work. The abstract should provide a good, clear summary or overview of your thesis, because this part will be the most widely published and read. It should be interesting enough to capture the reader's attention and the manner in which the abstract is written will give the examiners a fair idea of whether the rest of your thesis is well presented and of good quality. After the abstract, the next section that will be most widely read will be your introduction. This section should be interesting, read well and flow logically, but keep it short and to the point. Let's now look at style and structure. First, let's consider referencing, which is very important. Examiners are very pedantic about this. One examiner has said that no more than 10 referencing errors be allowed throughout the thesis, otherwise it should not be marked. That includes using the correct format for your referencing. Therefore, you must make sure that the correct referencing format is used. 
The general preference is for the APA format of referencing. That is the format used by the American Psychological Association. However, this may vary between disciplines, so it's best to check with your supervisor what reference style is used in your college. Good referencing is important because it allows your reader to refer to the foundations on which your research is built, and it tells the reader which part of your thesis is previous knowledge and which is your original work. What about editing? When revising your thesis, you should do this at least twice. Two full drafts will allow you to pick up most of the major flaws. Let other people besides your advisor read some sections, particularly the introduction and conclusion, and give you constructive feedback. Revise and refine as best you can, and set yourself a deadline for submission or you could be writing forever. I say this because you will feel that your thesis could always do with a constant revision, and if that's the case, then you will never finish writing it. Remember the curse of perfectionism, so always set yourself a deadline. Here is a checklist you can use for the revision process. When it comes to the structure of your thesis, it is very important to consult your supervisor about this. What does he or she expect? Be clear about this before you start writing. Remember, if you don't know where you are going, you are likely to end up somewhere else. Also, clearly indicate all sections and subsections, that is, headings and subheadings. As you write, be guided by an outline or plan. This helps keep track of the evolution of your ideas and determines the structure of your argument. An outline or plan also makes it easier to think in terms of chapters. This process allows you to synthesize your thesis into a unified and coherent piece of writing. To ensure that your thesis looks professional, keep the following elements consistent. Heading style, font size, font style, layout, and so on. Let's turn our attention now to maintaining a clear argument in your thesis. The following guide questions can assist in ensuring that your point comes across. What is your topic and how is your work interesting and important? State the problem as simply as you can. What are you doing that hasn't been done or known before? What message do you want to communicate? What is the point of your research? How does it fit into the context of your field? You have to be able to convince your reader of the validity of your work and its contribution to the body of knowledge. So a clear argument is absolutely imperative. Also, your thesis must consider its identification with key debates. At postgraduate level, your discussion of these issues must be well informed and thorough. Your work must be up to date with the current debates within your discipline and the topic area to which your research question relates.
Furthermore, you have to show which position within these debates your research findings support. You must be clear on how your debate fits in and show an awareness of the other researchers' positions in these debates. Besides ensuring that a clear argument comes through in your thesis, it is also vital that you have a good knowledge of relevant literature with regard to your field of study, theories, and methods. For your field of study, for instance, it is necessary to prove comprehensive knowledge of its contextual background as well as the various approaches and findings previously used to study the field. When discussing theories related to your study, the key concepts and or propositions that underpin the topic should be included. With regard to methods, you must be able to justify why you used a particular method in your research over other methods. So, you must first discuss the alternative methods and point out why your choice is more relevant to your research. Doing so allows you to identify the limitations of your study, which is not a bad thing to do. You must have limitations to keep your research focused. A final word on ensuring a good literature review. Include the works of experts in the field. You never know when one of them could be invited to sit on your panel Secondly, your literature should include up-to-date information from the most recent publications. Finally, let's review some useful writing tips. Outline, outline, outline. Start by writing the core of the thesis, which are chapters 3, 4, and 5. Constant contact with your supervisor is crucial so that you know you are on the right track. Ask others to look at your thesis, especially when you are at the revision stage, and consider their feedback. Set yourself goals and a deadline. You may be tempted to keep perfecting your thesis, but this is not possible in a finite amount of time. Learn to touch type. This skill will be very handy once the ideas start to flow and to avoid back and neck pain. Devote at least two to five hours per week to your writing. Exercise, eat and drink. You may be surprised to discover that your productivity improves after an hour of exercise. Say frequently as you work. You never know when a power outage could take place when you are typing. Print multiple copies of your work and label the updated versions. Save multiple electronic copies. This means saving your work on a couple of CDs and memory sticks as well as on your PC. Finally, keep going. You are on your way to achieving your goal and in the end, the effort will be well worth it. So, what have we covered in this lecture? First, we looked at suggestions for writing a well-presented thesis. Secondly, we discussed the expectations concerning the style and structure of a thesis. Next, we explored how you can achieve a clear argument. Then, we followed with a brief discussion on proving your knowledge of relevant literature. And finally, we proposed some helpful writing tips. I hope this lecture has helped you gain a better idea of how you can achieve a good thesis through following the suggestions I have made. I wish you all the best with your efforts and thesis writing.